Hi, I'm Brent, and I'm a developer evangelist at Twilio. If you're like me, you've been spending a lot of time in Animal Crossing lately, catching the wide variety of fish that are available on your island. Wait a second, why are all these fish bass? I don't get it. Every now and then, though, you catch something that's truly amazing, and you might want to know right now, how much is this worth? How much will Timmy and Tommy give me when I turn this in? There are a ton of great resources out on the internet that you can look up, but I wanted something I could just reach to and send a message real quick and get an answer. So I found this Google Sheet with a bunch of data in it, and I figured we could take that Google Sheet and create a WhatsApp bot that we could send a message to to look up prices. Let's hop right to it and maybe we can figure out what that butterfly is worth. We'll start with the Google Sheet, which I have a link for down in the description, and just take a look at what's available. Fish, bugs, fossils, and hybrids are here. There's a lot of info about where to find the different critters and what they are valued at. We're not going to need all of it, so we'll clean it up in a moment. The first thing we need to do with the sheet is make a copy of it so that we can make edits to it. Once you have a copy, we'll delete the first tab with the welcome tab because we don't need it. And we'll also delete the hybrids tab because we're not going to be working with that data either. Next, we need to clean up the existing tabs. The fish tab has a whole bunch of info about where fish are located in what months. Uh, and we're not going to need any of that data. So I'm going to delete all of those columns. Once those columns are deleted, we also have a row that we don't need here. We want the first row of our data to include the field names, so we need to delete this top row that just says fish with a picture. Next, we want to make sure that there's no gaps in the data. So down here at these lines, we want to delete this gap so that all of our data is contiguous right down to the bottom of the table. Then we'll do the exact same thing for the bugs table. We'll delete that top row and all of the columns at the end. Now I noticed there's one other thing that we didn't quite clean up here and that's the first column. The first column is empty and doesn't have a header. So we need to delete that in both the bugs table and the fish table. And once we're done with that, the data will be ready to go and be used inside of our project. It has all the names and all of the prices. Let's set up a Google Developer project to work with this data. Over in the Google Developer console, I'm going to create a new project. I'll call it ACNH Price Lookup and click Create. We're going to want to work with some APIs, so I'll come down to Go to API Overview and click the Enable APIs button. Here I'll look for the Google Sheets API and enable it for my project. Once that's done, we'll head back to the overview and click the Enable APIs and Services button once again and search for the Google Drive API and click Enable from the resulting page here as well. Next, we need to create some credentials so that we can access the sheet from our project. We're going to create a new service account. Give this any name that you want here. I'm just going to name it ACNH Service and click Create. Next, we need to tell it what access it should have. I'm going to use Project Editor and then click Continue. From here, we can create a key for access to this service. So we'll click Create Key. I'll pick JSON and then click Create. This will download a JSON file with our credentials, and we'll add that to our project in a moment. Our project will use the Twilio Serverless Toolkit. You can find out more details about that from the description down below. Just install it, and you'll be ready to go. Heading into the terminal, we use the Serverless Toolkit by running Twilio Serverless Init, and we want to pass in a name for the project. I'll call this ACNH price bot. And we want to create this using the blank template so that it doesn't include some code that's already been written. Once that's finished installing, change directories into your new price bot project. And the first thing you're going to want to do here is remove the readme and the blank function that was created by default in this project. We're going to create our own in a moment. To work with our Google Sheet, we'll use NPM to install the Google-Spreadsheet-NPM module that will allow us to easily work with the row and column-based data inside of the Google Spreadsheet. Next, we'll open everything up inside of a text editor. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, but feel free to use whatever is most comfortable for you. 
Inside of our project, I'll create a new file in the functions folder called acnh-price.protected.js. The protected just means that Twilio is the only one that can call this function. Then I'll copy over the credentials.json file that we downloaded earlier into our assets folder as creds.private.json, which will mean that only Twilio can access this. You won't be able to pull up it in a browser to be able to see it. Speaking of the credentials file, we need a email address out of here. It is listed as the client underscore email. Copy that out of this file and we're going to take it over to our Google spreadsheet to give access to our service account to this Google spreadsheet. Hit the share button on this Google sheet and paste in the email address that we just copied out and hit send to grant access to the service account. While we're here, we also need to grab the spreadsheet ID from the URL of the Google spreadsheet. It's right here in there. You want to grab that and copy it and bring it back over as we create the code for our function. The first thing we're going to do inside of our Twilio function here is bring in the Google spreadsheet module by requiring it from the NPM install that we did earlier by requiring Google dash spreadsheet. Our next bit of code will retrieve the credentials that are stored in creds.private.json by accessing them within the Twilio runtime. We use the FS module to read that file, but first we need to get access to the path to the file. So we'll use the Twilio runtime to get assets and pass in slash creds.json. This will return the actual file path to the file inside of the Twilio runtime. Then we can use that file path to read the file and parse it out as JSON. We'll call it json.parse and then fs.readfile sync passing in the credential file path that we fetched from the previous line. It'll be UTF-8 encoded, so we also need to pass in that encoding. But once this is done, we'll have all of our credentials stored locally so that we can use them in the rest of our code. We're going to start with a function that will allow us to get a critter from the spreadsheet. This could be either a bug or a fish from the Google Sheet that we set up earlier. Our first bit of code for working with the Google Spreadsheet will be to get the document from Google Spreadsheets. So call new Google Spreadsheet and pass in the spreadsheet ID. This will return the entire document. We want to specify that we're going to use a service account to access this and we'll pass in the credentials that we fetched above. Next, we can use the document to load its info in this video, we're going to be working with bugs and fish. So those are the first two tabs within the Google Sheet. So the first thing I'll do is get access to Sheet Sub-Zero and I'll store that as bug sheet. And the second one I'll call fish sheet and store doc.sheets by index sub one. It doesn't really matter. These might be in the wrong order for you. I've rearranged them in alphabetic order inside of my spreadsheet, but it doesn't matter too much because we're going to get the rows from each and concatenate them together. So the first thing we'll do is call await bug sheet dot get rows and store that as bugs. And then we'll call await fish sheet dot get rows and store that as fish. And then on our very next line, we'll combine both sets of data together. So we'll store that as rows and we'll call bugs.concat and pass in fish. Now we have a gigantic array of all the bugs and all the fish in one place. Next, we'll fetch the critter that was requested in the message that was sent to WhatsApp by filtering the rows based on what was passed in as critter name. We'll pass that through from the WhatsApp message later. So we'll call row.name.lowercase and compare that to the critter name that was passed in from our WhatsApp data. We'll lowercase that and trim it just in case it has extra characters. And then we'll pull the first result from that filter. There should only be one. All that's left to do in this helper function is to return the critter. We'll use that in a moment in our Twilio function. Now we can write our Twilio function. This code will be called anytime a message is sent to our WhatsApp service. And the first thing we'll want to do in there is get access to the body of the message. We'll pass the body of the message to our helper function and we'll then return back the price or an error message. So inside of our function, the first thing we're going to do is declare a messaging response since we're going to return a message back from this. Our critter name that was specified by the user will be available on the event dot 
body. We'll then pass the critter name that the user specified into the helper function that we wrote above by calling await get critter, passing in critter name. If this results in a successful critter being available, then we know that we can process it and return the price. So we'll call twimmel.message, and then inside of a template string, we'll return the price of your, and then substitute in the event.body, or critter name, is, and then substitute in the critter.price and then say bells at the end. So this will be the message we get if we were able to look up the price. Otherwise, we need to return an error message that says, I couldn't find that inside of our data list. Our function is complete, so all we need to do now is return from the function by calling callback and passing in the twimmel that we just structured. Then from the terminal, we can call twilio serverless deploy. This will deploy our function up to the Twilio runtime, and once it's done, it'll give us a URL that we can use for our particular function that we just wrote. We'll be adding that to our WhatsApp service in its webhook callback. Once your function is deployed, you can copy the URL from the functions section and take it over to the Twilio console. Inside the Twilio console, head to Programmable SMS and then over to the WhatsApp beta. If you haven't already, you'll need to connect to your sandbox by sending a WhatsApp message to the number that appears on screen. If you need more information about how this process works, please watch the video Getting Started with the Twilio API for WhatsApp that's appearing in a card right now and is also available down in the description below. Once you're all set up, paste in your function URL to where it says when a message comes in and hit save and you're set up to go test your price bot. All right, it's time to take out your Nook phone and try out the WhatsApp service. Let's first look up that tiger butterfly. All right, that's a respectable amount of bells. But I, what I really want to know about is that coelacanth. Did you know that's how it's pronounced? How much was that worth? That's going to definitely help with the old bell balance. I hope that this project was helpful for you and you now have a functioning Twilio API for WhatsApp bot for looking up prices on your island. Stay tuned to this channel for more videos that might go into some other aspects of Animal Crossing. Perhaps even these guys. We'll see you next time. I'm out of here.